Hello, everyone, and welcome to another K6 Office Hours. I am Nicole van der Hooven, and I bet you're surprised that we're actually on time this week. <laughs> that may or may not have something to do with my one of my newest co-workers. <laughs> Paul, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hey everybody, uh, Paul Baylog here. I'm uh, yeah, like Nicole just mentioned, I'm the newest. Uh, I'm the newbie for the uh, the K6 uh, DevRel team. So, you know, happy to be here. Are you the newest for the whole K6 team? Actually, uh, no, we had a couple. Well, actually, no. Uh, I was came in with uh, two other folks. Uh, there was okay, a okay, of developers, couple couple folks on the back end. I think. Uh, joined at the same time but yeah we we are growing pretty quickly hola leandro <laughs> he's already he's oh. he's uh, leandro would be here today except he and i have spoken at automation guild this week and leandro is over there manning the virtual k6 booth, ah, the booth. <laughs> and and uh, apparently also watching us <laughs> yeah. he's got booth duty Yes, he does. But while we're on the subject, before we get into who Paul is and why you should trust him, <laughs> we are still hiring. We are a very quickly growing team. We have just been, well, I say just, but in June last year, we were acquired by Grafana Labs. And yeah, we've just been trying to find more awesome people, but you have to be awesome. Like it's not just about, you know, what you know or what your experience is. You have to be someone we'd actually like to work with. So if you think that that's you or you know someone who is like that and fits one of the positions in our jobs board, then please ask them to apply or apply yourself because yeah, you we photo, need more coworkers. Yeah, and if you see a photo of Leandro and myself, the, the mustache is not a requirement, <laughs> but it is highly well, recommended. I hope not. <laughs> it's a, but it is highly recommended, so. <laughs> Hola, Charlie, como estas? <laughs> Charlie is a, it, it has been a really good supporter recently as well. He's a regular now. <laughs> okay, Paul, who are you? What did you used to do? All right. Okay. Straight to it. Yeah. No. Um, so again, my name's Paul Baylog. Um, it's one of those, yeah, just starts with a B and then it's kind of like, what? But uh, anyway, no. So I'm uh, new. I'm uh, been in, uh, I've been a developer, uh, a software architect and uh, into management a little bit for the last 23 years, right around there. Uh, actually a little bit longer than that. So kind of old, but uh, yeah, so I've been a developer. I'm, uh, you know, mostly Java. Uh, the last couple of years, I've been getting into Go quite a bit. Um, you know, I'm the organizer for the St. Louis Go Lang Meetup group, so like that. Uh, contributor on a couple projects here and there for, uh, you know, services like Linkerd and that, and just you know, loving to get into the open source community and the whole DevRel thing. I, I like to uh, learn new things and share what I learn. So. Hopefully it's all good stuff. I was a bit nervous there when you said Java. I thought you would be we would be stormed by hate comments or something. Yeah. But then no. you mentioned the Go Meetup, so you know maybe you're okay there. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Just a little. Did you feel any of that um, rabid fandom when you started getting into the Go community? Oh well, you know, I mean, everything cool is written in Go. I mean, you have everything in the cloud. And that's what actually got me into it. It's like, you know, Kubernetes, uh, you know, and everything around that whole cloud native uh, environment. All the best stuff is written in Go. And well, now it's transitioning to Rust a little bit too. But yeah, I, that's what kind of got me attracted to learning Go and getting involved with the community that way was for the, some of those projects like, like Docker and, uh, and uh, Kubernetes. So why do you think that is? Why are all the tools being written in Go? Do you think that it's purely because of the performance benefits over languages like Java? Yeah, that's that's a big deal uh, from it. I mean, the, the being able to do the concurrency and just, you know, really being able to write tight applications, native, you know, not 
well, it, it is still a garbage collected language, but, uh, you know, but to be able to write this, these nice little tight binaries and then deploy them on, you know, different, uh, environments. So it's, you know, that was the true, uh, that was the goal of Java, write once, run, run everywhere. But, uh, you know, but yeah, it's an exciting little language. It's, uh, you know, one of the big props for it is, uh, that they say it's simple, um, which, okay. Yeah, sure. That's the good marketing ploy. It's, it's simple in that it's only <laughs> got what, 25 keywords to the language, but, uh, it's not simple. It's, you know, you can write some very complicated things and it can be difficult to understand or write, but, uh, Hey, it's very powerful. And that's, that's the, that's the nice thing. So do you think that for an SRE or someone looking to expand more into DevOps, do you, would you recommend Go as the best language to get started with? I would. I mean, as far as, and I'm biased in that respect, because I am, I do like the compiled languages and that I've, uh, you know, I've dabbled in Python. I'm no Pythonista, that's for sure. Um, you know, other script. Oh, is that what you call it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Pythonista. <laughs> you know, I've, <laughs> I've hacked around on Perl and, uh, you know, again, I'm old, so I've uh, had to do that before. But, uh, but yeah, no, Go is is pretty nice language and then, uh, it can be pretty straightforward if you want to write it that way. You know, you can you don't have to go crazy with things. It's you know, um, just like any of the other languages, but uh, it does seem to be becoming that uh, kind of, I shouldn't say lowest common denominator, but it, it is one of those ones where it's like, you don't have to actually be a developer to work with it. And that's where with the SREs and, you know, if you're on the uh, the DevOps side of things, building infrastructure, using products like uh, Terraform, you know, it's all a flavor of Go. And uh, so it's, it's pretty... Uh, you know, powerful little language. How would you recommend that someone would get started with Go if they wanted to, asking uh, for a friend? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good <laughs> question. Yeah, no, there, I mean, there truly are tons of uh, resources out there. Um, and obviously, like, uh, you know, again, you could always join the St. Louis Go meetup group. We're all still doing virtual strictly. Uh, so, yeah, I've, uh, gotten folks from all around the world uh, joining up on our meetups. But, uh, you know, you can do that. Um, there's plenty of resources, too, with uh, um, the Go Bridge Foundation. So one of the things is that, uh, you know, the one of the nice things, too, about the community around Go is that they really push for the, uh, I don't know, underrepresented uh, folks to get involved, get into the language you know, um, start using that. So it is a very, very welcoming community. And that's one of the things that's really nice. And so they really do make an effort to, uh, for outreach and to be accessible. So with the GoBridge Foundation, that's, that's one of the, your, your entry ways as well. So they will, uh, they have a mentorship program as well, where you can try to get, uh, you can register and get signed up with a mentor uh, if you want, if, you know, if you work well that way. So there's, there's lots of plenty of avenues to go through to learn that. And uh, Bill Kennedy is one. I, I even have his book. I don't know. I, I think he should pay me for plugging this book. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the ultimate, ultimate go, go no ultimate book. goal. Okay. Note or go, go. I, I'm, yeah. I'm having a yeah, speech issue here, but uh, yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's a really good book. It's a workbook, you know, and it's big. This thing's huge. It's bigger than my head. So um, yeah, it is big. Yeah, but uh, mm. yeah. So I don't know. I, that's another thing that I would highly recommend. Uh, it's uh, but yeah, it's a very welcoming community. So questions are always, uh, you know, uh, requested or you know. I I may pick your brain later because I. I mean, I don't know, when do you actually really know <laughs> when you when you can program in something? Um, I, I'm more of like a conversational in 
a few languages, but I don't feel like I'm really fluent. And certainly oh. with Go, I have looked at it briefly in a hackathon and I learned what I need to do for that short period, but that's pretty much it. Um, a, the, a quick comment here from Fernando, who says that the guitar on the back doesn't look like a beginner's choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's uh, a COVID purchase. Uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm actually a bass guitarist. Um, I always thought I had too big of fingers for uh, to do chords uh, on a guitar. Oh. Uh, yeah, so I thought over COVID, I was going to buy the guitar and then work on that. So yeah, I can actually do C chords and F chords, and uh, you know, I'm not muting all the strings anymore. Um, that's I, good. Uh, yeah, yeah. I used to always be kind of a punk rocker, so I, I don't know. I got my Ramones shirt here on, um, but uh, yeah, so it's not all just bar chords. <laughs> I just, you've already seen this, but Mark was saying plus one to pandemic purchases. This is my pandemic purchase or one of them. <laughs> it's my electric ukulele. And honestly, I, I still don't really know how to play it. I can sort of do things, but not well. Um, but Mark also has a serious question. What makes Go such a, oops, that was the wrong one. That was <laughs> Leandro's one. But what makes Go such a performant or scalable runtime? Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, with the compiler and it is, it just, yeah, compiles down nice and tight. Um, I mean, these guys that created the language, I mean, uh, I'm uh, blanking on the names now. Um, but uh, these are guys that uh, they were they were big in the C community. Um, so they've learned a lot of lessons from uh, creating and maintaining, I guess, the uh, the C language. So these are folks that came out of uh, uh, the the Bell, uh, one of the baby Bells, I guess, but uh, the Bell system. Uh, and now they're with uh, Google uh, since about, I don't know, I think... Uh, I'm not sure when they went there. It was early 10s, I think, of uh, 2010s, early around there. And then that's when they created the uh, the Go language um, because uh, Google was needing uh, a little bit better language support for some of their products. So, I mean, you know, Kubernetes is actually the, I guess you could say it's the the child of uh, the, the Borg software system that Google runs to run you know, tens of thousands of virtual machines. So they just, yeah, I don't know. They wrote it tight. So it's a nice tight code. <laughs> so I, I, I looked into this a little bit and again, I'm a baby gopher, but I was personally interested in, you know, why, cause K6 used to be written in Lua, at, at least its origins were in Lua. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, for scripting. And um, there was a lot of talk about what scripting language should we use? What should it be written in? And Go and JavaScript were both very intentional. So I wondered why that was. And what I found out was it from my research, it comes down to three things, the Go routines, the Go scheduler, and the fact that it runs directly on native hardware. So I know like with um, tools like JMeter or really anything that, that runs on Java, the prevailing um, way that virtual users are executed is that for every virtual user, there's one thread that's used up. So that very quickly reaches a limit in terms of resource utilization. And of course, there's JVM layered that you'd have to tune. Tools like Gatling are better because even though it's actually based on Java, but they use the ACA framework, so they don't follow the one virtual user to yeah. one um, thread paradigm. They're able to more intelligently do it, although there are still limitations of that. With Go, one virtual user is like a Go routine, I believe, and that is um, something that's on top of thread. So it gives Go apps a lot more control over what, you know, what, when, um, when a thread has think time on it or something, it doesn't mean that that entire thread is stopped in execution. Exactly. And part of that is because of the Go scheduler. I, I'm actually looking at my notes on this right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I mean, going to say, you're doing great. 
<laughs> I mean, I, I rely on my notes for everything. I just like remember that I've looked this up. Um, <laughs> and then the go scheduler is what manages the go routines, kind of like the traffic cop that in says when they should go and not. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that there's so it, it does that, but it also manages network IO. It makes blocking calls to to stop both kernel threads and go routine. So the, there's also a janitor part that does the, the garbage collection, I believe. Yes. Right. And then and then there's the fact that it's a compiled language. So unlike Java or Python, it doesn't need to be interpreted. Yeah, Java has that kind of partial compilation where it's uh, turned into bytecode, and that's what the JVM runs, and that's that's why it makes it uh, portable to, you know, any system that's running a JVM. So, so yeah, yeah, it's all cool stuff made by people a lot smarter than me. That's for sure. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I wasn't involved in those discussions. I wasn't in K six yet, but um, it it seems like they they made the right choice. I'm just trying to figure yeah. out why you know the rationale for it after the fact but i thought i thought it was all very well reasoned out and it kind of yeah. made me wonder why there aren't more tools more testing tools that are written in go and i really yeah. hate that that um we don't usually think to test the test tools we just kind of take for granted that these test tools are going to be able to tell us when something is fast or not but if they're not fast enough themselves, I don't know. Like, why? Why is that not a bigger deal? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all that that dog fooding, you know. Be able to test itself. So, why did you join K six? Well, I'm glad you asked that. No, it's uh, so <laughs> anyway. But yeah, so the last the last couple of years, like I said, <laughs> I uh, I've been getting more into this whole, uh, you know the open source community a bit more uh, participating in that. So uh, working with open source projects and just kind of, I don't know, it's one of these things where it's like this, uh, I never thought of it as kind of going into more of a teaching role, but uh, you know, that, that kind of got me interested in the whole developer advocacy aspect of things. So it's like when this, uh, I heard about this opportunity come up, it's like, well, I've used K6 at uh, my previous uh, in my previous life a uh, little bit, and as well as Grafana. So I'm you know post acquisition. So I knew those both products, or I guess all the products from Grafana as well. And you know it's had a good reputation. So it's like yeah, no brainer. I'm count me in. <laughs> Where do I sign? So well, I'm glad that we managed to sucker you in. <laughs> <laughs> me too. How's it been for your, your first uh, two weeks? Is it now? Yeah, this is this is uh, business day number ten for me. Yeah, this is my second wow. week now. So, yeah, the, the the first week was primarily the the regular onboarding from or so from Grafana. But uh, yeah, this week I've actually gotten to get a little bit more involved with uh, the K six product. Uh, the open source aspect and some of the functions and all that the, for my uh, my week of load testing is, uh, you know, the the gauntlet that uh, new K sixers are brought through. So, yeah, well, let's let's talk about that in case there's anybody who who has who doesn't know yet what that is. There is a tradition in K six for new people to spend their first week just messing around with any part or all parts of the app that they are interested in. There's no direction. There's no like, you must do the following things. It's more like explore what you want. You know, some people who are on Windows, for example, which is not a popular operating system within the K6 team, have chosen to look specifically at the user experience from the point of view of someone who's a Windows user or someone I, um, I know that Floor, when she came on, she looked at accessibility and the language and the documentation. I mean, it's so cool because each person kind of does their own thing and we end up with really interesting points of view that we probably wouldn't get if we assigned people things, right? So what did you decide to look into, Paul? Yeah. So, well, you know, being a, uh, a code monkey at heart, um, obviously my, my 
thing that I want to do is, uh, you know, to understand the, the Go development piece. So we have the XK6, which you can actually create your own extensions written in Go to uh, kind of uh, provide additional features for the K6 uh, application. So, you know, that is the, the that the Swiss Army knife uh, utility <laughs> is the uh, the tagline was for the video today. <laughs> oh, right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I almost forgot that that's what I did. Oh, I, I hey, actually I was, meant to have this. I, I, was, so, I was tossing up the softball to you real nice and easy so you could just crush it. <laughs> it's not really a Swiss Army knife. I'm sorry I don't have one, but I do have a Leatherman multi-tool. <laughs> um, no, the reason that the reason that I, I put that in is because I think that the extension ecosystem really shows maturity in any in any for any tool, really, because there's always going to be a difference between what a company thinks most people will need, which is what we're trying to do. We're trying to anticipate features that maybe 90% of people are looking for. And uh, so there's a disparity between that and what you as, uh, you know, a sole tester or developer might need in your particular situation. So we're never going to be able to give you everything that everybody wants. And I know that the K6 team is particularly picky about what makes it into K6 core, even features that we really believe in and really want to integrate maybe in the future, things like XK6 browser aren't in K6 core. And that's kind of different from the approach that other tool vendors take, I think, not just in testing, but in general, I think people want to cram it a tool in with all the features that anyone could possibly want, but that all comes at a performance cost. Yep, definitely. So what did you think when when you looked into XK6? No, I thought that was actually really cool. I mean, it did throw me off a little bit because uh, what you do when you're, when you're running that, you have all these different modules that you can pull in for different uh, functionality. So like, uh, you know, things to export your set, your uh, uh, summary directly to Prometheus uh, or some other, even, you know, we don't have to stick with Grafana uh, supported tools. You know, you can go to, uh, you know, what Datadog, I guess uh, you could push, push metrics out to that. Um, so, but anyway, but the thing that kind of threw me off at first was that, okay, yeah, you're, you're truly building a new binary that's replacing your K6, you know, binary that you're kind of used to using and that may be on your path already. So like, uh, you know, me, I'm a Mac user. So I use, I tend to like uh, homebrew for uh, installing things. So, you know, First out the Same. gate, I did, you know, brew install K6. So, okay, well, I get that one. Now that's the the core K6 OSS uh, product, you know. So when I go to do that, then that's on my path. So in other words, if I, I can be in any directory, type K6, and that's one I'm going to get. Well, when you use XK6 to actually generate a new binary, it's in that directory where you ran it. You know, or you can specify a different output directory or give it a different name if you really want to. But, uh, you know, but that's that was kind of one of the things it's like, wait, um, I'm getting not getting my changes. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, that's right. I have to specifically make it so that it knows it's this, you know, this binary that's in this directory. That's the one I want. So, but yeah, but that was just one of those goofy little things. And it just takes once or twice to be like, oh, yeah, duh. Um, and then you, you know, you just kind of becomes muscle memory. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, actually, maybe I, I should. Oh, well, let's start. I, I, I did want to mention, too, that there are other ways to extend K6 without going to extensions directly. One of the common things that I hear as feedback from people that have tried K6, especially testers, is that the result summary is not as concise as they would like, or, or sometimes they're trying to 
match like the results or the report dashboard of another tool just for consistency, which totally makes sense. But one thing that they could do is they can change handle summary. This was a re relatively recent change. I mean, it's it's at least been since I since I got here. So a few months ago, 33 or something, 0 0.33, I'm not sure. But with the handle summary, handle summary is a function that you can call that will replace that built in reporting system. So if you wanted to format it differently, or not have all the bells and whistles of the current um, end of test summary report, you could do that just in your script, you don't have to, you know, publish it anywhere, you could do that within the script and reuse it within the company if if you would like. So that is one way to change how the results look. And another way is to import something from JS lib. Okay, maybe maybe I will share my screen, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and see, and that's where being the code monkey that I am and then just uh, wanting to mess around with Go, yeah, see, I, I dove right into that. You don't have to, like the, like you know, Nicole is saying, you can you can do the handle summary or the JS lib. So, yeah. yeah, well, I mean, do, does it come across really weirdly colored to you for some reason? Is it normal looking? Okay. <laughs> It just it it's like peach and green to me for some reason. Oh no, I'm seeing I'm seeing purple. Uh. Okay, well that's good. <laughs> so <laughs> so this is JS Live. Let me um, put a link in chat to it so people can go to it as well. These are free, just JS libraries that are useful for scripts. So they're already, they're utilities that are for load testing. There's one for form data here, um, for multi-part stuff. Papa Parse is the CSV um, CSV library that, that I use for reading uh, test data from CSV files with K6. One of the ones that I pretty much always use is uh, random in between this one, because I always like to do a, a think a think time. So like this, oh, here, here's the sleep. Uh oh, technical difficulties. Um, I still here. <laughs> there we go. You're back. Sorry about that. I, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Let me just um, quickly kick my husband off of the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was worried. I thought I was going to have okay. to do a song dance show or something. Yeah, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a, a hazing thing. I just didn't tell you. Yes. you know? <laughs> <laughs> No, Mark, um, it, it, it was a glitch in my matrix, I guess. <laughs> and Mark was saying, is it Twitch or a restream glitch in the matrix? <laughs> we should be back now, I think. Anyway, so I was saying that to, did you, did, it, did you hear what I was saying about random in between? I think that's where uh, all of a sudden you got locked up. Yeah, but the, yeah, okay. so the randomized uh, sleep time between the yes, the yes. Yeah. yeah, so that's, that's one thing that I almost always put in my scripts. And it's really cool, because all you need to do is to copy this part. Well, you, you actually don't need this one and this one. So it, it is just one line, and then you can already use it. So that's pretty awesome. And of course, because I am not a code monkey, even though I can code, but I, I always try to, to try to do things that you know I can actually 
figure out quickly. So this is these are things that you can do the JS lib and also the handle summary that will just require using something in your script. Uh, Mark is saying same he 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 has dynamic min max to to think time and, and pacing. Yeah, that's true. He could definitely do that as well. It's JavaScript, so you can put in any conditions that you want. And then of course there's XK6. For those who don't know, XK6 is a fancy term for K6 extensions. And it is a binary that you first have to install and then you have to this is what paul was saying you're basically creating a custom k6 binary so you're rebuilding k6 with different um, extensions that you've chosen so when, when you did that paul did you how did you choose the extensions oh well, i mean how did you find them i guess did you just search on github yeah, I mean, from so from our, our website, uh, uh, there's a, a, a registry of different uh, extensions that are available that I guess are, I don't know, the approved maybe? I don't, do we consider them approved? I don't know if there's really a vetting process or anything. No, uh, I don't think, we, we just do a search for anything that's, that's prefixed with XK6, yeah. I think, on GitHub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But one thing, so, too, I was going to mention, I, I, I kind of yeah. forgot to mention this, though, that, uh, yeah, to use the XK6 bundler, or you have to have Go environment installed locally. So right now. Yeah. Should probably change that. <laughs> yeah, I know that there was talk or I heard of talk or I don't know uh, about having something maybe where you can just kind of build it via the website and download a customized binary with the uh, mm -hmm. options mm -hmm. extensions that you want but i don't know we'll see i think that is i think that might be the the idea but what we're talking about is if you go to k6.io slash docs um, I mean, I think that's always a good place to start whenever you have any questions about anything related to K6. And then you can click on extensions here and you'll get taken to this list of all of the XK6 prefixed repos on, on GitHub. And this is not just from us. I mean, a lot of these are from our team, but also a lot are from community members or just users of K6 who couldn't figure out how to do something that was specific to their use case. It's actually really, really nice to see how how well it's taken off and, and that people are actually writing their own things for this. <laughs> but so what, what Paul was talking about is if you go to build bundle here, it will doesn't actually build the bundle, which is a little confusing. It builds the command that you then copy <laughs> that builds the bundle. So <laughs> it, the current version is 0 0.36. So let's say you wanted chaos and um, this XK6 client Prometheus remote. And you can then and you have this command that you can just copy and put in your terminal in the machine where you've installed XK6. And then you that'll create a custom K6 version. I also found actually just just today that there's, have you seen this page about um, creating an extension? I did. <laughs> okay, I, no, I, I didn't, did. I just saw it today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> that actually, yeah. that was one of the... <laughs> <laughs> for my week of load testing, this is actually one of the things that I was walking through to go through that, you know, the two different types of extensions, the, the JavaScript and then the output extension. So I was going through that um, as well. So and I'm, and I'm hoping to ultimately work on that and do some uh, additional, I don't know, maybe like uh, a, if you're familiar with Katakoda, um, where it's kind of like a... a I don't know. It's a step-by-step -step instructional thing and it uses Docker and then you can go through and actually do all the commands uh, rather than just kind of having your Go environment mm. set up. Um, 
But anyway, we'll see. Yeah, that would be really awesome. Um, it, this does take a, take you through a bunch of things. Like it, it. What I thought was interesting was it says that if you can, if you can do it, you should just try to create a JavaScript, a pure JavaScript extension rather than a Go one, because the hackathon project that I was telling you I participated in was for XK6 Chaos. Um, my part was just doing the handle summary for it so that it will say, it'll have like a, a, it'll output like the number of times that a pod has been terminated or which pod has been terminated or something. And that's why I, I knew about it. But it was kind of confusing for a new, new person in, in new gopher, I guess, because it's not just Go, it's Go and JavaScript uh -huh. and how they talk to each other. So I believe that here it says um, there is here, the K6 Go to JS bridge. I believe that's Goja is what they're referring to, isn't it? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, and so there are some some eccentricities in it. Like if you export something in Go, it's written in the the Pascal case, but then it gets yeah. converted into the Camel case for JavaScript, which really confused me the first time it happened. <laughs> I was like, I am copying and pasting the same thing. Why isn't yeah. it working? Why isn't yeah. it not? Why is it not there? <laughs> Yeah, and you can use the uh, the J JavaScript, I guess. Uh, there's an annotation, basically, that you can use in your uh, Go code that'll override that behavior and say, no, this is how I want it to be output, the name, so it doesn't do that uh, kind of replacement. So. Yeah. So what, what did you think when you were looking through this? Did Was it easy to find what you were looking for? So far, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, again, though, I'm just doing kind of baby steps. So, you know, I don't know what I don't know yet. So, uh, you know, um, you can also tell the truth, even if it's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And actually, where, where there were little things that were wrong, I've been trying to uh, update documentation <laughs> or at least noting it, um, you know, for uh, the, the reviews. But yeah, no, everything actually That's is good. Pretty, pretty nice. I mean, I, you know, nothing is ever perfect. So you can always strive for perfection, but you know, you're not going to get it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think that there's a lot that we could do to make the documentation better on the, mm. on the actual Go and JavaScript front. There's a lot of things that are confusing there that I, I definitely struggled with, but I had full access to the K6 team, you know? So uh -huh. if I if I struggled, then I think it might still be difficult for someone who who isn't so comfortable in mm -hmm. one or, or, or either, yeah. but that's something that we can definitely work on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's, so what, that's something with that Katakoda, that's we, where you actually go through step-by-step step and just kind of, you know, build mm. the thing. Um, so almost, almost like you're actually doing it completely on your own, you know, so it's, it's, it's pretty cool stuff, but hopefully a better, yeah. it'll make a better learning experience anyway. Yeah. It's funny because we always get his comments about our documentation, but it's, it's almost like they, they could always be better, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's always the case, you know, not to mention it, it looks great. You know, the, the, yes. CS, the CSS styles on all the, the documentation, it's wonderful. So, <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> and so, what did you, here. yes. What did you, which extensions did you think about trying? I think you mentioned the Prometheus Remote Right one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I did the, uh, there was the uh, XK6 dashboard. I ran through that one. I used that. So that was kind of cool. That kind of, uh, you know, changes the output so that, uh, you know, again, you don't have to use the K6 cloud, um, which is the, the pay service, you know, stick with the OSS. And that's one of the awesome things too about K6 is that, uh, you know, it's like, we're really focused on the open source, 
you know, so we want you to get using that. And then, uh, but anyway, this uh, XK6 dashboard would let you uh, have a nice little graph of the activity going through your load test right there and, you know, in real time or, well, slight lag, but, you know, but it's just like oh, what you would see. Oh, it's in real time. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So as you're running your test, you're going to see this, it like starts up a little, uh, you know, web server essentially. And then you just hit that link and then it'll sit there and it'll refresh and you'll see the graph is, you know, mm. you're going through all your different stages and that. And then you'll still get the same summary as you would from the command line. Um, at okay. The end. But yeah, it's, so it's, it's you... kind of nice. I don't suppose you would have... Uh, you would be able to see what that looks like now. Show us what that looks like. You don't have. Oh, there are graphs on the on yeah. the GitHub repo here. Let me I share think so. My screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's because uh, I haven't tried yeah. this. What what I have tried is Ben Ben UK Ben C UK his dashboard one. This is this one is from Ivan Skiba whom we've had on office hours before because he yeah. is just he's awesome. He he's created so many K6 extensions and he doesn't work for K6. He just actually <laughs> is a heavy user of K6. So the one that I am talking about um is more like an after the fact kind of thing. Right, that it's, HTML report after, after Yes, that. yes. Yeah. Um, which is also useful for reporting, but it looks like you're saying this happen. This happens in real time. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. That is very nice. I like that a lot. Yeah. 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 Okay. And I mean, yeah. At least with the HTML one, though, too, you get those uh, the results. I mean, it's not a graph, but uh, you can you know persist that and keep it somewhere. Whereas this one, it's you know it's only really good. For the the execution of the test itself so. yeah uh, i just wanted to show the the other one that i was talking about because that one is a different approach it's kind of i know that gatling does this we should really have something like this built in oh so there are actually two i've only tried one of them this is the one that i've tried ben yeah. c uk yeah, and, and that one's a nice one. It looks where, like you know, this. Yeah. And that would be a nice one for like in your CI C D pipelines. Um, mm -hmm. if you have any artifacts from, you know, you you do your build, you maybe run your load test, and then here you have this HTML artifact that you can keep with that pipeline execution. Mm -hmm. And then that way then you can always go back and see, oh yeah, here it is. Uh this is, you know, what it looked like at that time for this this release. So that's a good point. Yeah. So does um, Ivan's, Ivan Skiba's one, does this, oh, this is a different one again. This is from Baidi Liu and Tim. Okay. And I think this is also an HTML one. I really need to try it as well. Okay. It looks like it, it has some of the same things that the other one did, just a, a slight variation. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, I like the, the that they have the checks here too, but the one that you are talking about, Ivan's one, does is this also a an HTML page or is this a an image? No, you said it updates in real time. Yeah, it's just updating in real time as it's as it's executing. I don't know if there's anything that you could say. Okay, yeah, let me export this as an HTML. Yeah, you know. Um, mm. I don't know. Hey, that's Jesus Prometheus? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what oh, <laughs> underneath the Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's actually uh, using uh, the Prometheus uh, data layout. So Interesting. I need to try this out. You know, this looks very much like JMeter. <laughs> oh, it doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. Something about the graphs. It just great. reminds me. Yeah. 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 And then that's, you yeah, know, no, that's cool. similar. Yeah, similar visualizations that you would get from the cloud product. So, mm. and and then when once you have that that custom build using K six, you just do K six run out yeah. dashboard. Yeah, and an emphasis. I like on that he uses large. that too. Yeah. Sorry. Oh no, and then that's where. Oh I was yes, this I one. Yes. Flash, because otherwise you're going to get the one that's just 
you know, the, the standard one, I guess. It's Yes, like, yes. So. Yeah, so you um for for just to re reiterate cuz I also ran into this issue when when I got started with this. Um you have to do the dot backslash. Is this a backslash or a forward slash? I can I never remember. That's a, I guess that's a Forward forward slash. slash? Yeah. Yeah, that, Okay. that, I don't Uh, know. just It goes so uphill. just to It goes uphill. a bit. So. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so that this part is so that it uses the custom binary of K6 rather, rather than like the official, officially released one. And I also like that Ivan uses the, this dash dash, it's not a, dash dash out um, because we already do that for cloud or or you know outputting to csv so that's not something that he had to redo oh and you can do parameters too Yep. that's interesting Yeah, some of that stuff I did not get into in depth on that, but uh, yeah, I did a, you know, bundled it in and ran a very simple thing. And it's like, wow, that's cool. It, and it works. You know, it's uh, quick and easy. That's uh, what I always Yeah. like. <laughs> No, this is this is really awesome. I need to try that. Fernando says, "Don't say J meter two more times." <laughs> Yeah. I I can't help it, you know. <laughs> uh, I I'd still say I, I probably know J meter more than K six still, but it's it's close. It's close. <laughs> um. All right. Was was there anything else that you that you wanted to try out? Uh, I, yeah, I just have to look at my notes again here that, uh, yeah, so like, uh, like the distributed tracing, that's one that uh, I, I'm looking into uh, getting into one of these times next, um, because that's, that's a cool thing. I mean, that, that from my past lives, you know, that's the observability aspect. And this is where, you know, the tie in with Grafana is, it's a perfect match. Um, But uh, yeah, but with the distributed tracing, I mean, things are getting a lot more complex with uh, the breakup of monolithic applications into microservices. And, you know, you have calls that go between service to service to service. So you may be wait making one API call. Well, that might be going through, you know, who knows how many N number of uh, microservices on the back end. And with this, I, I don't know the full details, but I'm assuming that uh, we throw in a trace ID that gets passed through all the services. Yes. And that way, then we have this nice little, uh, you know, the uh, uh, what is it? The uh, oh, a little breadcrumb trail here of all the activity for the for the request. So it's it's good stuff. Yeah. Danielle would probably be the best person to talk to about that. This is a hackathon project. Um, there's a lot of disclaimers here because I think there are it's definitely not ready for prime time do, do not do not think that this is you know um, going to be in in core anytime soon i think there are plans to to work on it further um, but the other one that i i actually have up here since i i was talking about this on, on automation guild i still have it so i i might as well show it I think my favorite extension is XK6 browser. <laughs> and You know, that's I just was because, watching that. yeah. Yeah, and you, that was, that looked awesome. I didn't realize that that was that cool. Um, so, yeah. Sorry, I just had Yeah. to say that. Very cool, but No, I haven't messed no. with that. I, I really, I get it because just the thought of having protocol based and and browser based testing in one script is like it's like it's like when I, when you think about when you write down your requirements for the ideal testing tool and that's always one of them something that can do load testing and automation and accessibility and you know cross browser testing and and all that and it's not there yet it's definitely not there yet but we're getting there like i i can see the potential in it so i was just saying i i always do the random in between and look here it is i forgot i'd put that in here as well <laughs> i don't know it's just it's just handy 
Um, so what XK6 browser is for others who didn't watch my, <laughs> my presentation on Automation Guild is it mimics Playwright. There are a lot of APIs and we're actually trying to get feature parity with Playwright. Um, <laughs> Fernando says he's going to write an extension that gets you the dash dash J meter flag, which displays a hideous GUI. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> That would be funny, actually. You should do that for like April Fools or something. <laughs> there we go. Uh, but this is really familiar. This so our the fact the fact that we're trying to get feature parity with Playwright and are drawing heavily in terms of inspiration for the APIs means that a lot of this is going to be familiar for anyone that's used, you know, Puppet here or playwright or flood element is is what i came from um, i used to be with tricentus flood and they element started off as a wrapper around puppeteer now it's a wrapper around playwright and yeah it's it's all very similar as well so let me show you like the a protocol script like looks like this it, it's it's making http requests um, I know you know this, Paul, but you know, <laughs> it's for the others. And in contrast here, when you look at the the browser one, it's all about clicking on elements and waiting for certain things to happen on the page. So it's a very different way of scripting. So the question is, why would you do both? And the answer is because they measure different things. So. I'll actually, I already have the custom K6 binary. So that's why I have to do the, the dot forward slash. And then let me try that. And then maybe we'll actually see it opening up Chromium here and driving the browser. So this is one of our other colleagues test shop. And it is adding something to, well, going to a product and then adding it to the cart. And if you look at the, so there are, there, it's it's a little noisy right now because it um, it says everything. <laughs> we, we've, I saw that there was some plans to make it a little less noisy and not show some things that aren't really errors, but it does work. And we can see that by looking at the screenshots. Oh, well, let's remove that. So this is one of the homepage. So this like, there's a bunch here that I wanted it to add, that I wanted it to save. So it's just a good way of making sure that something actually happened. So I also like that in addition to these, this is from this line down, these are all things that are normally reported in a protocol based testing, the testing script, but all of these ones that are prefixed with browser are just for XK6 browser. And I'd love to see this expanded even more because I mean, pretty much everything that's on dev tools, like, can we, can we tie it in with like lighthouse stuff too? That would be really awesome. And what I really, what I like even further is because it's using the same tool, K6, in the same language, then you can even put them together. So here is one, one like runner script that calls the other two scripts, the protocol and the browser, and runs them at the same time in two different scenarios. So that is super cool. And you get all of the results tied in together and you can, it's just, it's just another one less tool that you're going to have to use in your tool stack. Yeah, definitely slick. Yeah. Did you know that Robin was the one that, that created the prototype for this? Uh-oh. I think your partner might be uh, streaming Netflix again. I, I think of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying that Robin, our CEO, is the one that created the the prototype for XK6 browser. 
Oh, nice. Uh, I didn't realize that, that that's where it originated. Yeah, no, it is. It's very slick. And then to be able to do those screen captures at uh, points in the test, too, that's that's. Oh, nice. there's more. I'm so excited. Oh. Playwright has um, the ability to capture video and we want to get that soon. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, it's it's already oh. on the cards. So it'll just record. Because the, the thing with the the thing with the screenshot is some you know you have to know in advance that you want something, but sometimes you don't know, and you find oh. out that you do need a screenshot in that place when you find an error and realize it could have been solved if you had known right. to put something there. But I mean, I don't know exactly how the video implementation will work out, but that would be kind of cool to to see in real time what the script did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> so you said that you were already using K6, even before you joined K6. What could you talk about your use case for it? Sure. Because yeah. normally I think people think of K6 as like a tester's tool, but you you were not, or at least your job description didn't have the word tester in it. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, just a tester's headache, I guess. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, yeah, so like, uh, well, one of the things that I've done uh, to get some exposure to K6 previously was I have this uh, open source project uh, I call We SVC. Um, we is in like Scottish being small, um, tiny, but uh, basically the idea was to have a, uh, you know, a, a same. It's better than the other meaning. Right. Yeah. It's, but a, a tiny microservice that's implemented, uh, you know, the same, I guess, uh, API, it's going to be uh, implemented in different languages, different, uh, you know, application frameworks and all this stuff. So what I did was I wanted all those implementations to be written the same way. I mean, you know, you, so we compare apples to apples. Um, so what I did was I used K6 to actually create a script that is uh, just kind of a API contract or API compliance mm. script that I can run against each one of those. So just to make sure that everything is returned the same way if you call this, you know, whatever URL that, uh, you know, even things like uh, with the JSON response that, uh, you know, capitalization is the exact same. So that way then it's it's truly the same. And then, you know, ultimately I was going to uh, do some stuff with the output that I could then combine them and have benchmarks comparing each of these different, uh, you know, executions, each of the different types of uh, languages. So I could compare, you know, Go versus Ruby on Rails versus something that's implemented in Python ultimately. Again, I'm not a Pythonista, so that's going to take a while. But, uh, <laughs> and then versus uh, something that's written in Rust. So, uh, you know, so that was that was just kind of a fun little side thing that I had uh, created out there. There's a uh, uh, GitHub organization. But uh, anyway, but there was that. And in previous life, we were trying to do some load testing for some uh, microservices that we were creating. So one of the guys on my team, he actually put that together. He's the one that actually found K6. And then I'm just oh. like, oh, yeah, that is cool. So, you know. <laughs> Have you yeah, spoken to him and, and been like, oh, by the way, you know, that tool yeah. you introduced me to, <laughs> I'm leaving you <laughs> all for it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but how has your experience been in terms of the team and the culture and just, you know, the novelty of it all? Yeah, no, I mean, that's great. I mean, so obviously with, uh, you know, with Grafana and, and K6, uh, you know, it's a remote first company. So um, there's no offices. I mean, I guess K6 does have an office in Stockholm um, from pre-COVID and some of the folks go there still. But, um, but yeah, Technically before the most part. not anymore. I think they, they gave it up and are now working from the Grafana office, I think, which was like. Like, like, I think you could see the Grafana office from the K6 office. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Because, yeah, I knew that there was a satellite office there. And then I think New York is another satellite somewhat office. And I think we have a WeWork space in uh, Austin, Texas. So, uh, oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I thought I did see that on there somewhere, but uh, but no. But as far as like culture, I I love it. I, I couldn't have asked for oh, uh, more. Oh, good. You know, um, everybody, everyone that I've met so far has been awesome. I yeah, I'm super happy to be involved. The only oddball thing right now is that I mean, you know, as far as Grafana, <laughs> we're spread across what 51 countries. So time zone differences, it's a, it's a thing, you know, so like yourself, you're seven hours ahead of me. Um, so right now, yeah, for me, it's 11 a.m. You're at six. Uh, I, I, I yeah. now have now world clocks up on my wall. Yes. I have, <laughs> I have one for uh, Stockholm time and then one for my time. And then I even put one in there for Pacific. Just, uh, I don't know. You got to have an odd number on that thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because I think of it in terms of like Paul time, Leandro yeah. time, you know, <laughs> Mark time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But yeah, but that's, that's, that's the biggest thing right now for me to overcome is just that difference. Um, you know, which that's not a, not that big of a deal because I mean, you know, again, being a, a kind of a remote first company now, it's, it's all set up for being async. Um, so, you know, yeah. we use Slack and, you know, there's all that. So it's, so really the, the thing is for me right now personally is just the, uh, figuring out what, what my workflow is going to be. Um, a lot of times I get up for some reason at five in the morning or four in the morning. And then it's like, oh, I guess I'll get on the work. And then it's like, y'all are just getting ready to go to lunch or something. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's, so it's, it's yeah. a little weird that way. I, it's, it's your Slack notifications. You've got to disable them. <laughs> yep, exactly. Exactly. I gotta, I gotta figure out the right, the right blocks of time to really uh, enforce those. <laughs> yeah. All right. But, well, we are actually out of time. I, I knew that we would have way too much to, to talk about, <laughs> but <laughs> thank you for coming. I really love when I manage to convince people from the team to talk to other people because I really love the people that we work with. I think, we're super lucky to have a team like this and i think it's cool to to be to be a part of something that so many talented people are working on and uh, welcome to the team because now you're part of that too now it's all official right <laughs> yeah there's no going back now no no <laughs> all right so thank I'm you safe. everybody tattoo right uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, that's 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 for your third week. Didn't we tell you? <laughs> awesome. Yeah, but it's it's supposed to be on your forehead though. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for for watching. Thank you, Paul, for coming, and we will see you next week. Have a good weekend, everybody. All right.